All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how the Polar Vortex is actually gonna be making an appearance here very soon. In the month of May, I've never seen anything like this, and we're actually gonna break a bunch of records for a bunch of areas. Maybe not your area, but many, many people will. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I wanna know, are you a cat person or a dog person? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let me know a reason why actually, by the way, as well. Now, let's get started and we're looking at this sounding for, it says OKX, but that actually means New York City. Uh, and that star right there, you can see on the screen, is what the GFS is forecasting the temperatures to be like for Saturday evening in on the 500 millibar temperature. So that's kind of... Um, very high up in the atmosphere, but actually the blue lines are representing our record. So this is record breaking cold in the upper atmosphere. And actually this would be near record cold for March, February, January, we would be breaking records no matter what month of the year this was. So the fact that it's happening in May is all the more extraordinary, actually. Very, very record-breaking cold. And honestly, I was trying to tell you guys this. I think a lot of people didn't take it seriously. Like, oh, this isn't record-breaking. This is extremely record breaking like this isn't even close again this would break records in december january february or march depending on what day it was but for a lot of regions not just new york this is going to be pretty widespread actually now we're about to move on and what we're going to do is we're going to start to get into our modeled forecast i want to explain what a polar vortex is and why this is one because i already know i'm going to get a lot of comments like this isn't a polar vortex well it is and i'm going to show you exactly why it is All right, and what we're looking at here is actually our 500 millibar geopotential height with MSLP. Basically, all you need to know is that those blue colors and those low pressure systems are basically circulating in a counterclockwise motion. This is always happening in the Arctic Circle. Now, sometimes what happens is an area of this gets cut off and dips down somewhere. This can happen in any uh, direction away from the Arctic Circle. But what's going to end up happening as we move forward, this is actually from uh, Monday, May 4th. As we move forward towards actually yesterday, you can see that there is an area there over northern Canada that's kind of breaking off with the darker blues. We have a low pressure system located there, uh, and it's kind of breaking off. Let's go ahead and move on towards now. This is going to be in the future, Friday, May 8th, and you can see there is an area over the northeastern United States and southeastern Canada, those blue uh, color shades that are completely broken off from the Arctic Circle. And what this is, is this is our polar vortex dipping down and it's weakening, so it's bringing a branch down into the eastern United States. And really, uh, here is by 2 a.m. on Saturday, and you can see it fully impacts the northeastern United States and portion of the Ohio, the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes as well. Uh, very interesting there. This is very rare for this time of year. Usually, we would see something like this happen in December, January, or February, usually towards the later ends of the winter because the Arctic has all that time to build up the ice. Uh, but really, this Arctic Circle has been very strong. It hasn't unleashed any of that cold all winter. You guys know this because it hasn't been very cold all winter long. That's because the Arctic has held on to all of that cold and ice and snow and just built up colder and colder and colder temperatures. And it's finally now unleashing all of that after the winter is all said and done. And that's why we're feeling the impacts we are. All right, now we're about to move on and start talking about the future uh, temperature anomalies, start talking about what this means on the surface for the United States. All right, and here we are at our two meter temperature anomalies. And basically all this is, is how much colder than normal it is. And this is for this morning at about 2 a.m. And you can see we have widespread darker blues and purples. And this is well below normal temperatures. It is much colder than what is typical for this time of year, but it's gonna get much, much colder. So let's go ahead and move on towards 2 a.m. on Saturday. And this is basically the peak of our polar vortex that is located over the Eastern and Central United States. Those pinks showing up, that's where we're about 16 to 28 degrees below average Celsius. That is extremely far below normal and, again, record-breaking. So let's look at those 700 HPA air temperatures. All you need to know is this is higher up in the atmosphere. This is where it's mostly record-breaking. Uh, the upper air temperatures are so, so cold. Uh, over Michigan and areas in Canada, that's basically 25 to 30 degrees be uh, below freezing Celsius. 
in the upper atmosphere. That is where we're breaking many, many records in the upper air by this point. Let's look at what that means on the surface. Many widespread 20s and 30s. This is, you know, this is even a pretty cold night again in January, February, uh, December. So, I mean, very, very cold. And a lot of these areas have seen their leaves come in, obviously. It's May. So a lot of us have seen our leaves come in. And this is just going to completely damage crops, completely damage all of the leaves that have come in. I, I don't know what kind of impacts these are going to have because, again, this is historic. We haven't seen anything really like this. So it's hard to even tell you what the impacts are going to be. Uh, but if it is if it is this cold, I can assure you that it is going to have major, major impacts. We're even going to see snow for a lot of regions. Very interesting pattern coming up. All right, now we're about to move on, and what we're going to do is we're going to move forward through the day on Saturday and just take a look at what the what we're seeing in the future here. Now, speaking about that snow, I will update you guys that on that in the coming days. It's looking more. And more like a major snowstorm, actually, and less and less just like the snow shower. So the NAM model ended up pretty much uh, being the one that stuck to its guns, and the rest of the models came along, which is surprising. You don't typically see that, but it does look like we will have a snowstorm of some sort for the mid-Atlantic and northeastern United States. So I will need to update you guys on that one. All right, now we're looking at Saturday afternoon here in the temperature anomalies and you can see it's actually colder further colder than normal than it was at 2 a.m so we're gonna have a very cold day on saturday as well i expect some areas to actually stay below freezing for a lot of these regions throughout the day on saturday let's go ahead and move towards 2 a.m on sunday uh here and you can see we're still receiving purples not as many of those pinks but definitely purples and you can see a lot of areas go below freezing once again not quite as cold as saturday morning at 2 a.m but on sunday morning at 2 a.m a widespread mid mid 30s lower 30s and then even some areas below freezing indicated by the blue all right now let's go ahead and take this to about 2 p.m. on Monday, and actually it is looking like a lot of those pinks stick around. So through the weekend, through the early week, still very, very far below normal. And then here's Tuesday at about 2 a.m. We can see widespread purples, but really not as many of those pinks showing up. Here's that upper air, uh, and you can see it's not nearly as cold. We're only dealing with about 10 to 20 degrees below freezing here, and it's very, very isolated to the very northern regions of the United States. However, this is still far, far below normal. It's just not quite as cold as that Saturday morning was. All right, now let's go ahead and take it to about 2 a.m. on Tuesday for those actual temperatures at the surface. And you can see, once again, actually, we're going to have some pretty uh, widespread areas of below freezing temperatures, maybe even middle to lower 20s there for a lot of these regions showing up. All right, now we're about to move on, and we're going to take a look at middle of next week and then take it to the end of next week where we're going to see a very big change. I have good news finally, actually. All right, and here we are at Wednesday, May 13th, the morning time, about 8 a.m. Our temperature anomalies are looking a little less purple and a little more just blue, which is indicating a little bit less uh, below normal as far as temperatures are concerned. Really, uh, this is a lot closer to normal than the days prior. And as we move towards Saturday at about 8 a.m., look at that, guys. I told you guys I hadn't seen it in the near future, but finally the models are starting to pick up on a bit of warm-up starting at about the 14th, 15th time frame. So the final half of our month might not look like the first half of our month of May. We might finally start to see some warmth move in for a lot of these regions, which is kind of what I was expecting on my May forecast. So I'm really happy to see that paint out quite well. Uh, but we will be seeing a lot more of the red show up. And what this might mean is we might start to see more severe weather again, because once we see below normal temperatures for the entire eastern United States and central United States, typically that very much so limits the severe weather. Uh, but now that we're going to see some warm air head in, possibly, that's going to really pick up the severe weather again. So that's why there's going to be a big pause in the severe weather for the first half of the month of May. All right. Now let's take a look at what the Climate Prediction Center has to say about their 6 to 10 day outlook and their 8 to 14 day outlook. On the 6 to 10 day outlook, this is going to be for the 12th through the 16th. You can see they're not very confident in cold temperatures, but they are quite confident that the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Northeastern United States, as well as some surrounding regions, We'll be dealing with possibly some below average temperatures for that entire time frame. Again, some time between the 12th and the 16th is when I'm expecting the warm up to occur. So really, um, this is probably why they're not very confident, because if we get a big warm up, it could actually make those days above average or closer to normal. Uh, and then here's the 8 to 14 day outlook, 14th through the 20th. 
And the warm temperatures began to show up for the southern half of the eastern half of the United States. So I guess the southern southeastern corner of the United States. Still some blues for the northeastern United States and the Midwest, but we are starting to see more reds, which is a good sign that the warmer temperatures will be returning. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what is your favorite song of all time? And Cheryl said, Holly Jolly Christmas. And I I love Christmas songs. Here's the thing about Christmas songs, though. Tell me if you guys agree with this in the comments down below, because this is kind of like a really debatable one. But I feel like if Christmas songs are played before December, it really just ruins Christmas. Because by the time it's actually December and Christmas time, it's not even special anymore. Does anybody else feel like that? Because I feel like Christmas stuff is starting earlier and earlier and earlier to where it's starting in like September and it just ruins it and doesn't make it special by the time it's December. I mean, we have Christmas trees for sale, Christmas decorations for sale. You can't go to Walmart without just feeling like it's actually already December, but they start it so, so, so early that it ruins it. And again, by the time it's December, it doesn't even feel special because you've been dealing with it for so many months. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with that. That might be an unpopular uh, opinion, but that's really how I've always felt about it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.